Hi, this is Ellen DeLapp, certified professional organizer and owner of professionalorganizer.com. I'm here to help you today by navigating getting organized in your home. ADHD friendly ways to clear clutter and organize your home is our presentation today. So in the times of the pandemic, we're now working from home, schooling at home and integrating life and work. We're taking a fresh look at our surroundings and it may have been something you've been planning to do for a long time is get organized and you're feeling a little overwhelmed and baffled by it all. And just so you know, I'm decluttering at my home too. So I'm here to share how to get started, organize your st organizing strategies for your stuff and tips for getting and staying organized. So let's get started. Let's talk about getting started first. I know organizing can be overwhelming, frustrating, and takes so much time. So planning our work is a really important part of this. We have to get in the right frame of mind to get organized. There's lots of strategies to motivate you, but I'm always thinking about blogs and podcasts and books that help me when I'm starting to some, on something new. So getting started, I always share, start small. Start small means a small space or a small amount of time. A small space might be just your junk drawer in your kitchen. And a small amount of time might be 15 minutes. I know this goes counter from the way you think when you have ADHD. It's usually taking a big amount of time to get something done and being sure I'm doing it the right perfect way and also being sure that I'm knowing all the skills and ways to do this perfectly. So I'm here to tell you, there is no perfect way to do organizing. And I'm here to share with you the skills that you might need. So as you're thinking about starting small, also think of it as the warm up. That warm up to getting started means that you're gonna be working a little bit longer than that initial 15 minutes, because as you lead into organizing and lean into it, you're gonna be pulled in and it's gonna help you actually accomplish the goals that you have. So don't worry about getting started small. It's gonna build your confidence and it's also gonna make you feel like, oh, I really know what I have and I know how to do this. Planning your time is a really important step. In the old world order before the COVID-19 pandemic, it was about assigning a time to get started because organizing was often a low priority and we didn't have the time to do it. We're super busy. In this new time, I want you to think about planning your time as I'm gonna plan my high energy time that I can make the best decisions to do the work I have at hand. So planning your time in the long run will serve you really well because as we exit the pandemic, we're gonna be thinking we're gonna get busier again and we still wanna have allocated times that we set aside that we're gonna be doing some organizing and decluttering on a routine basis. I don't know the exact link between ADHD and perfectionism, but I do know a link exists. And those challenges of perfectionism often hold us back from getting started and finishing. When we're thinking about that perfectionism, think about what is worthy of that amount of time and complication that you might want to think about. I don't know how to do this perfectly. Think about what's the smallest baby step. Again, going back to starting small, when you're feeling overwhelmed, just take back, take your steps back a few times and think, what's the smallest thing I can do to get started on my goal? And because procrastination is often a result of that perfectionism, we wanna be sure that we get started more than anything else. So any one small start is a really smart start. Emotional attachments often interfere with our getting organized and letting go of things. Those emotional attachments range from gifts we were given from people who are departed to things that were gifts that we never really felt were our style or there are things that we would use in our own home. Or it might be that we're thinking if someone comes to visit us, would we be displaying this item so they'd be able to see it and know that we appreciated it. So often an antidote to these emotional attachments is taking a photo of the item because we're thinking, will I remember it? I will always remember it if it's a photo or setting it aside for a minute to give it a pause to contemplate, okay, is this something that I really want to keep? Is it something that is meaningful to me? Is it something I use? 
or can I let this go? So setting a something aside for a few minutes gives us that pause that we need that can give us clarity on letting go of something. And then there are um, financial attachments. Those financial attachments mean more so now in COVID-19 because we are really living in the just in case scenario. And in just in case, we keep a lot more things because we might need them later. We're also living in a scenario where we know that financial things are about to change. And will we be able to have the resources to repurchase or reuse these again? So given what we're living in, the times we're living in right now, I want to encourage you to think about if I organize these things, will I have the best access to them? Will I know I have them? So when just in case occurs, I can actually use these items. There's lots of other financial attachments that we're struggling with about letting go of things in terms of turning our clutter into cash. And there's ways we can do that in coming up. And we'll talk about those in a few minutes. So remember, get motivated by either reading blogs, listening to audiobooks or podcasts, so you're ready to let go of things and declutter, which will be our first step in getting organized. Organizing strategies, I always talk about plan your work and work your plan. That means that there's some planning that you'll be so glad you did ahead of time before you just jumped in. And those plans have to do with building a team so you're not isolated and you're not doing this alone and finding the resources you need to let go of things. We're definitely living in a different world right now where many of the options are limited, but there's always boxes that are in parking lots where we can let go of things. There's also givebackbox.com where you're using your Amazon boxes to let go of things. So in making your plan, think about where will these things go as I let go of them? What is heavy trash day for things that I'm going to trash? What are some of the options for the community that I live in? So planning your work means you're gonna be able to be more efficient and effective as you're getting started with decluttering. So the first step, like I mentioned, is letting go of things. And we often have consignment and Facebook marketplace and philanthropies to donate to. So these are all ways that we can let go of our stuff and feel really comfortable so tap into whatever is the most valuable to you to be most motivating. And then think about letting go in terms of the questions that you might ask yourself. On the handout, I've had a list of questions that you might ask that have to do with your the use of your stuff, the quantity of your stuff, your lifestyle, emotional and financial attachments. So some of those questions can be really valuable in helping you get more decisive as you're thinking about letting go, if you're struggling, I always re recommend starting in a small space so you don't have to make too many decisions at one time. And also thinking about even just what I call the tournament method. Choose two items that are alike, compare them, decide which one will go and which one will stay. So calling down your solutions to be super simple decision making. Categorizing and letting go often come hand in hand because Marie Kondo talks about in her book, The Magic of Tidying Up, that we can declutter by category. So think about the categories that might be dispersed around your home and gather them together. So often when we see things together, it's way easier for us to make decisions because we're highly visual. And think about letting go in terms of those same decisions again, but by groups. So start with something that's super easy as a category to let go of because that will help you be more confident in your decision-making. Think about the categories that are existing already, and if you can go to one of those categories to do some decluttering or create the category. Once you've finalized your decluttering phase, it's definitely time for categorizing again. So be sure you're grouping things together that you use either by zone in terms of how I use items to accomplish a single task, a perfect zone I see in almost every home I work in is the gift wrap zone. It's where we have the tissue, the bags, and the ribbon together with scissors. So categorize by grouping things you use together and create a home for those items in the place that you use them. It's important to designate different rooms in your house for different functions so that storage of organized stuff can be in that space. 
You can maximize that home by thinking about vertical spaces and thinking about where do I use things most often. That's not to say that you won't have scissors in every room, but group items together mainly in the room that you're going to be using them in. And assigning them a home might have to do with the cabinets you have or the bookshelves you have or the hanging space you have. When I think about organizing products, typically my clients with ADHD have many, many organizing products. So I want you to gather them together again and consolidate them and see what you have. If you haven't been using them as effectively, you'll be able to see when you gather them all together that maybe we want to improve on how we're using them. I always recommend using clear products because highly visual people respond best with that. And of course, we'll be doing some labeling too. So when I think about the organizing products that you might purchase, they can be delivered to your home pretty quickly in terms of using very similar general products that you can use throughout your home space. I often think of shoebox size containers, the next size up sweater box containers, and then a larger size. All of these clear containers can be nested together when you're not using them. So organizing products can be inexpensively purchased, or if you need something really specific, it's easy to search the internet for them. Again, we all often have many products in your home, so I'm gonna encourage you to reuse what you already have. So finally, working your plan and keeping organized is often the hardest part for people with ADHD. There seems to be a lot of things that just get easily distributed throughout your home. So I'm a frequent discussion with my clients has to do with what I call a reset. The reset happens every evening or at least once a week. And that reset is when things get back to their original homes so they can be kept and put away. That reset is best done with your team, your family unit, or whoever's living with you so that everyone is accomplishing that task together and everyone feels equally responsible for getting things back to their home. That reset could include a time that you not only do a little cleaning, like getting rid of trash, but also getting things back to the space where they're originally housed. Now, clearly this could be made a lot more fun with a playlist. And so I'm really encouraging you to think of some fun ways to do that, to accomplish this task. So let me share with you a few tips for getting and staying organized. If we have these routines in place, then it's gonna be much easier for you to stay organized. I advise a lot of tips and tricks for labeling. I myself and Evan are an over-labeler. And as an over-labeler, I find places that I think are really important for families to label. Those spaces include the pantry and closets, drawers, and desk drawers. So an example in the pantry, it's easy to label the shelves with a small tape labeler. I usually purchase mine from one of the big box stores. I use the half inch tape and I use the either the clear tape with black lettering or the white tape with black lettering. Some of the tips and tricks are that I label it with what everyone commonly calls that space. So in the pantry, I might have breakfast items, I might have baking items, I might have snack items. In your closet, I'd have the different types of clothes that I wear. Same thing for dresser drawers for your kids. For any of the spaces in your desk that you need to label the checkbooks if you still have them or office supplies. So think about all the ways that if you label something, it's way more visual and it's way easier for you to find. I believe in strategic work zones in your home. Like I mentioned the gift wrap, I also believe that there's a coffee zone in your kitchen. There's office supply zones in your office. So be thinking about the places that you use different types of materials and supplies and be sure to create those zones for yourself. I'm a big advocate of finding a clutter buddy or a paper partner. This body double can be instrumental in not only helping you stay tethered to your task of organizing, it can also help you as a resource when you're trying to decide and to make those decisions easier for yourself. So these people can be anyone in your home, but you can also FaceTime with people so it's easy to make that contact. It's also an accountability feature. It helps you stay in the, in the mindset of what you're trying to accomplish and your goals. And finally, make it fun. 
not only a playlist, but also a reward because this is hard work and we deserve that reward. And that reward might be reading some of those magazines. They might be taking a walk or a bike ride. They might be sitting in the sun for a few minutes. I've attached some resources as well, and I'm here to answer your questions whenever you've completed this, this class. I'm thinking about all the ways that you can make a difference while you're staying at home and working and playing with your kids. My name is Ellen DeLapp, Certified Professional Organizer. I'd love to hear from you what you found most valuable about this. I've attached my information at the bottom of your handout so you can contact me with any questions you might have. Thank you so much and happy organizing.